Hey, first off, congratulations. And thank you for taking the challenge. I'm really honored to assist you. And I want to thank you for trusting me. I will not let you down. First things first, I provide the treasure map. What I mean by that is I actually have a client who is a treasure hunter. I have two of them actually. And I didn't believe them when they told me what they did until they sent me one, the first client I had sent me a video because he documents everything he does. There are maps all through Europe, especially where he is. There are maps that you can go to the library in different places and you can get these maps. They are treasure maps. They are documented from wealthy families of where they store these treasures. And usually anyone has access to them. And so I heard that. I was like, why wouldn't anyone do it? He goes, I'll send you a video. He sends me a video of him getting the treasure map. At a, it was actually at a museum. And then he packing up all his equipment, doing the research, figuring out the terrain, and then going on an adventure is the best way I could say it. Carrying heavy equipment, going through your woods, trying to figure all this stuff out, finding like etchings in rocks that are like maps. It's really fascinating. And then there's this giant boulder and then he excavating it, getting like having all this crazy stuff. There's like a full construction route, but in the middle of nowhere where there's no roads, and this was difficult. It was rain. It was all kinds of stuff. It was like an Indiana Jones movie. And finally gets there. He, underneath this giant boulder, they move it. And there's this little cavern, cavern, I should say. And it has like, uh, like pot, like golden and silver pots and just different random things that were made of precious metals. And there was a ring in there. And that was it, that was it. Then he had to take everything back and figure it out. And then how do you sell this? And a lot of these museums would give him the maps because he would sell these items back to them. And so that's a treasure map. So that I use that metaphor, the treasure map, because that is what this like. I give you the treasure map, your best body blueprint. It works 100% of the time when you do. It's just, the, it's the science, but your job is the art of living it in all these different situations. When life doesn't go your way and when life does go your way, a lot of times with food, why is food so challenging? We know what to do. It's not that complicated. Actually, we make it complicated because we tend not to do these little things, but why is food so challenging? It's the psychology of food because we are conditioned to eat foods that aren't that great for us and eat a lot of them at holidays, when we celebrate, when everything's great. And then when we're sad, we soothe our emotions with foods a lot of the time too. And we have these habits and some are deeper ingrained in some people than others. And then if you really start to make it part of you and say, start telling stories about like, oh, I have such a big appetite. I can't stop eating. I can't diet. I'm not that type of person. It becomes part of an identity. And the only way to create lasting change in anything is to become the type of person that can live it. You must change your identity. Now your identity is whatever you want to create. If you want to become an athlete, you become an athlete. And you're like, well, I'm not athletic. Well, become athletic, start moving. What is an athlete? That is who we are actually modeling. An athlete is not someone that plays a sport. An athlete is someone who intentionally and strategically challenges their mind and body in order to improve their performance so they can show up as their best. That's what an athlete is. So that by, by that definition, anyone who moves their body in a way or fuels their body in a way to improve their performance is an athlete. And that's the truth. And so that's an identity we want to adopt to create lasting change. Cause what, is, what does an athlete do? An athlete trains, they don't exercise. I mentioned this when I spoke, but we don't exercise here. We train because if you, most people exercise and they do it because they don't feel like they're enough. They're like, Oh, once I lose the weight, then I'm worthy of life's rewards. Then I'm wor worthy of love. Then I'm worthy of success and all these things. It's a nonsensical story that we've created that we've been programmed into. And so what is training? Well, athletes train fans are active, they exercise, but they don't excel. There's a difference between a participant and a champion. And that's what you're going to learn here. 
you already do this in other areas of your life or you would not have been in that room, my friend. So now we're all, we're just expanding your identity into another category of your life. And you may already be in incredible shape, but there's another level for you, right? And you may have not ever exercised in your entire life, but now you're going to start training. And it is a gift that you haven't done other things because you don't have to unlearn anything. The people that really struggle are the more advanced ones. And it was challenging for me learning all this stuff because I had a lot of preconceived notions, a lot of beliefs, a lot of stories about exercise. I thought you had to go to the gym. You need all this crazy equipment. You had to eat perfectly, all these things. You had to take all these supplements. And some of that's true, but not all of it. And then I realized there are people that are incredible shape that don't go to gyms. There are people in incredible shape that don't use any equipment at all. And there are people that use all the equipment and are in incredible shape. But what it comes down to is this psychological piece, this identity piece. The way you create anything in life is you first create it in your mind, the theater of your mind. Now, I've been blessed my entire life to be around incredibly successful people. I remember when I first played football when I was seven years old, I'm in the huddle. And my football coach has two Super Bowl rings on from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And all through my life, I've been, my dad was a world champion fighter. Everyone around me has always been like that, but I also had the opposite. And so I started noticing these patterns, how a champion thinks, or a really happy, successful, fulfilled client thinks compared to maybe someone they're related to, or one of their friends that they referred to me. And I started noticing these differences. And then when I started, I started learning from Tony when I was a little kid. So that's why I started knowing these things when I was 12 years old. And then when we become friends and I go over with him for the last decade, I, you know, I can just sit there and ask him and like, Hey, what do you think of this? This is that, what do you think this person believes? And then we have these detailed, deep discussions on psychology and how all this works. And it's a real blessing. And that's what I want to share with you during this time. But as achievers, we tend to focus on what do I need to do? Now I'm going to give you that. Now the challenge is, is there will be beliefs that you have. I would challenge all those beliefs by simply saying, why would I teach that to you? If it didn't work, honestly, come on. There's no one on the planet that has more transformation photos than me and my team. And my team is just me and Andrea right now. <laughs> so, it's, so it's not that we're so smart. It's just that we, just focus on getting the results. What, what really works. And the thing that limits most people, the chokehold, if you will, if you've been the business mastery is the psychology of the owner and you own your body. That is what is most important. Now you may be wondering why can't I start now? Well, because there's other work that needs to be done. And that's the psychological perspective. We need to get the mind right. And we do that. There's something called the North Star process. We just touched on the very first part of it when I spoke, when I showed you all those, those stories of the older people that kick ass, the ones that defy the odds, the ones that reverse aging. Those are the ones that will inspire us, but we will become them and exceed that. That is the nature of humans. We exceed things, we grow. And so, I want to go through a couple things with you. I'm going to give you the link to the North Star process and tell you how it works. Challenge starts now. Now you're going to say like, what do I need to do for exercise? What do I need to do for eating? You know, do the best you can move, do whatever. Don't kill yourself. Make your priority the mindset. Before you change your body, you must first change your mind. This is so important. I cannot tell you. And I know you already know this but I want you to go deep on this. I want you to go all in on, hey, I'm gonna step into this North Star process and I'm going to write the script to the movie of my life. And it starts with my body and what I put in my body and it's gonna channel out into every other area of my life. That is why training nutrition and taking care of your body is so important because it does not just affect one area of your life. The way we do it, it affects every area of your life the better because what is training it's a spiritual act it's a sacred act training unlike exercise training 
is when you intentionally and strategically challenge your mind and body to access your highest and best self, who the good Lord, the creator of everything, you could call unconditional love, through the eyes of unconditional love, made you to be. Who are you at your best? We need a daily ritual, a daily practice of summoning that line within you, your true self, your higher self. That is the purpose of this. And when that becomes your purpose, it becomes bigger than you. And so what type of person would you have to be to skip a training session? When you do it, to be your best for yourself and those you love in the world and for your mission and purpose, you'd have to be a jackass, right? And we're not jackasses. <laughs> and so when that truly becomes your higher purpose for training, you will never miss a training session. Now I'm going to teach you strategies. So whenever you're not feeling well, whenever you're stressed, whenever maybe you're not sleep, you're changing 50 time zones. How can you still train and at least hold your ground, but also put yourself in state. So there is always a way you don't always kill yourself in the gym. That's what you're going to learn. You're going to stimulate the body. You're going to connect to your higher self because if you don't connect to your higher self, what type of food choices do we make? Do we make good food choices or poor food choices? When you're in states of fear, of stress, of worry, of uncertainty, do you tend to eat better or worse? Or do you tend not to eat at all and then eat not so good? We all know what the answer is. We are here to cultivate states of love-based emotion because all there's only two types of emotion, love-based emotion and the lack of love, which we call fear. Now, if you look at it energetically, what does fear do? Fear is an implosive energy, which means it can't last. It falls in upon itself. It's self-sabotage. It's destructive energy. It does, it's not sustainable energy. That's why evil things don't last. They come and go in cycles. Love-based emotional states could be courage, determination, gratitude, appreciation, joy, love, any of these things. Compassion is explosive energy. It generates energy. Here, I'll prove it to you. If you, have you ever been in a place where you were so tired and then all of a sudden you just started laughing or all of a sudden you had all kinds of energy, right? In fact, when we were at the event, we were having dinner, uh, like one of the third night or something there and our time zones are all off. And uh, I was so tired, I was like dozing off while we we're sitting there talking. And uh, all of a sudden we started telling stories and jokes and we're cracking up and we're wide awake. But that was literally within 30 seconds. Because what we did, we started telling stories and started to remember of times we felt really connected and we had fun and went through tough things and we prevailed and it was funny now. It wasn't funny at the time, but now it's funny. <laughs> but that is what this challenge is about, is about commanding your highest and best self, which is your love-based self. That is your natural self. That is your essence. And from there, you have the answers. From that place of connection, you always find a way. From that place, you make great decisions. And not perfect decisions, but you make productive, constructive decisions. And it's, it's, and it's not, because let's think of it, love-based emotion is constructive. Fear-based emotion is destructive. Just by its nature alone, you have to improve. You're gonna make great decisions. Now, there's a couple other things you may have questions on. I'm going to come back to the North Star process and tell you how to implement that. But one of the things a lot of people have questions about is the lab work. Now, when you were at the event, everyone submitted their DNA test. Thanks to Andrea. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Uh, and to you. And that's never happened before. Now, we have a new lab uh, that has an interesting DNA test that's really going to be cool. And it's the United States. And they've received the sample, so we're gonna get these things back probably in a month. But we have a lot of work to do before that. We need to get the mindset going, and we need to get this North Star polished, and when you read it, make it exciting, where it moves you. You're writing this story of victory, of triumph. But we also need to get in those daily disciplines, those core habits, and the number one 
foundational habit, the number one daily practice that drives everything else is training in the morning the way we do, not randomly moving around. That's not strategic. That doesn't always produce results. It rarely does. But where we combine the mental conditioning with the three types of exercise throughout the week to challenge the body, to stimulate the body to change and to put ourselves in state, to connect to your highest and best self, what we call here, summon the lion. That is the purpose. If without that, the other things don't happen. But the thing is, when you start to do that, you want to drink more water. You want to avoid drinking things that aren't good for you. You want to eat better foods. But when you tell someone just to change their diet with out having some daily practice to shift their state it's very challenging we're going to make this as easy as possible for you and it's going to become we're going to work in alignment with your body because once we get that dna test back it's going to tell us your body's genetically preferred fuel source is it fats or carbs or both or neither and what do you do in those cases I mean, you're going to understand your body on a different level and these tests i've been doing these tests for over a decade and i gotta tell you they are very useful but there's other things on genetic tests that is absolute shit that is just not true and it's because they got to put things on there to sell it because there's only a couple things on there they can't charge the price I get it it's a business but I will tell you what's useful and what is not and you will know and I will make sure you know that because it can plant seeds of, of like there's some genetic test labs that say hey you are genetically prone just by being born to blow out your ACL and have back pain now is that's that's just crazy it's what you do. What matters is your choices, your lifestyle. It's those little things each day. So you could be genetically prone to a disease, uh, but the likelihood of you actually getting it is very, very low. In fact, I won't go into it right now, but I will teach you as we go through this challenge, a lot of things that we are taught are just simply not true. I will teach you the principles. I will teach you how the body works. If you decide that you want to learn this, because my goal is to educate and empower you to become your own best personal trainer. I want you to know how to do this. There's some things no one should delegate. You should get a plan from a coach, but no one should have a trainer. And this is coming from the guy that won the world's best personal training contest every year they had it, every category. And I'm in the fitness hall of fame for being a trainer, elected alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jack Lowain, which is a really big deal to me, by the way. Uh, but I'm telling you, it is not the answer. People rely on something outside of themselves. And when you do, you give away your power. So do not rely upon me. I am not going to allow that to happen. I'm going to teach you how to fish, my friends, and not just with one dinky pole. I'm gonna, you're going to have nets and ships and fleets. You're going to know every which way this works, and it's going to be simple because it only comes down to eight daily disciplines. And they're not all daily, actually. You train, you fuel and hydrate, you sleep, and you stay in a state of love-based emotion. That's the simple thing. But we also have a way of measuring the results, the results tracking system. So during the first week, what's going to happen is you are going to do an assessment. You're probably wondering like, how do I, how can I make a program for such different people? Well, it's actually quite simple when you do this your entire life <laughs> and you have 10 years to figure it out just in a group of platinum partners and it's the structure of the program. And so you will learn all that, but that first week is going to tell me what you, where to start you, where to go from there. And it's going to be less work than you think. What you must learn is intensity and presence. That is what's going to be the difference between a champion and just someone who's a participant and someone who's merely a fan. A lot of people are going to start this. Not everyone's going to finish it. Even in a group of awesome people, even in a group of people that have all the tools to do this, you will have the treasure map, but still people won't manage their state. Still, people won't take the time to create an inspiring North Star, something that moves them. Why is that? Well, it's your stories. And so, why in law number one? This is the belief that changes all belief. Every successful, happy, fulfilled person I've ever worked with or been friends with has this belief in some way. They defy limitation. In fact, and most of these people, myself included, it makes them a little angry. What is lion law number one? I would write this down, my friend. I absolutely and utterly refuse every story of limitation 
that I use to rationalize and justify being less than I am. That is the belief you want to install. And you probably have it in other areas of life, probably in business. But it's a standard you must have for yourself. This involves no one else, just you. Now, I am your coach. How much do I care about your excuses? I know they're all lies. So I have no interest in why you didn't do something. I have no interest in why you think you can't do something because I know it's not true. Especially if you were in that room. You're one of the rare ones, my friend. So that is the core belief that is essential for physical mastery or for anything in life. If you want to get 12 months of results in 12 weeks, that is the core of it right there. There is always a way when you are devoted. When you are in it to win it, you find the way. When you have a compelling vision and a higher purpose that moves you, the plan unfolds. You figure it out. Even if you're traveling around the world, you figure it out. So all of your programs are made with a small amount of equipment, the minimal amount of equipment. So all you have, now some of you will have beliefs, like I had beliefs. If I would, if this was 15 years ago and I saw my own program, I would be like, wow, this is crazy. I'm not doing this. I need all kinds of equipment. I need to go to the gym. I need tons of weights. I need all this stuff. And it was really a go at, honestly. I felt like I wanted to look strong in front of people. I didn't think at that time. Looking back, I realize it now. When we're in it, we tend to rationalize and justify it. <laughs> Even me. That's my job, too. This is crazy. So the equipment is you have bands that go around your legs, right? And that works certain muscles. You have bands you stand on, bands you can clip to a wall or door or something. And you have something called a suspension trainer. The brand most people use is a TRX, but they're all the same. You could use, the, it's originally developed based off of hanging rings and gymnastics. But with that equipment, you can train every muscle in your body efficiently and effectively. And it's only the size of a pair of sneakers. When you stick everything in a little bag and tighten it up, it's pair of size sneakers. Now, if you can't travel with that, then what is your level of determination? What is your level of commitment? What is your level of devotion? So someone sent me a message yesterday and said, oh, I'm traveling. I want to travel light. I, I'm not bringing this or this. And they said, can you make me a program just with um, my body weight? I was like, I can, but it's not going to be efficient. And it's, you, you know, that's not going to be ideal, especially for travel, because you want structural balance and alignment, especially when you travel. Your nutrition tends to be off, you know, you're changing time zones. Like, why not just take that thing? What it tells me is that person is not dedicated. And so I asked them that and they're like, oh, okay, I'm taking it, you know, but it was like, I had to remind them. It was a story of limitation. This person was telling me, I, I only care about your longevity, your health and how you feel and that you can show up each day as your, your best self. That's what's important to me because I know with that, everything else works out great. And so can you use other equipment? Absolutely you can, but I want you to understand how to do it anytime, anywhere so that you're empowered. So if you're on a boat, you're on an airplane. I have, I have at least a half dozen clients that have sent me pictures and videos of them training in an airport. They find a little area where they can train <laughs> and during connecting flights. They get delayed flights or something like that. Like that's devotion. And there's, that's abs That's limitless. That is someone that always finds a way. And I think it's a beautiful thing because I know that doesn't carry on, that carries on into other areas of your life and their relationships and their businesses and every other aspect. That is a belief. That is an identity. You always find a way. Not, oh, I can, I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. That only leads one, one place. And that's regret, my friend. And so if you're going to use other equipment, here's the other equipment I would recommend. So. Sometimes you travel, you just can't travel with weights, right? But weights are great. Now, the best type of weights are dumbbells. Those are the ones that you can put in each hand. Why is that? It's because they move where your body moves. When you get into a machine or you grab onto a bar, they're not bad, I'm just saying. What's better? Well, we're looking at joint friendly, train for a lifetime. Because you can train for two years and get in the best shape of your life, but if you stop, it all goes away, my friend. 
if you if you don't use it you lose it so we want to make choices our exercise selection things that serve us that make us more functional and athletic strong all these things and so dumbbells move with the body like the bands when you use the bands they move where you move you really can't mess it up when you use a machine you have to contort to that machine your body has, the machine goes one way and if you don't fit it then what takes the brunt of that it's going to be your joints a barbell same thing why do so many guys have shoulder problems from bench pressing cuz their hands don't move when you use dumbbells your hands can move so the shoulders have less stress to them but also they don't work the other side of their body the back and so they have an imbalance i make every program where you are structurally balanced you train all the muscles in the body that's why you, you, people usually fall in love with their favorite exercises and then they get injuries like every runner is injured almost at some point they're injured and they usually have back pain because all they do is run you need to move different ways it's super important Now I'm touching on the core principles. I'm going to wrap this up in a second here. Um but I just want to tell you about the two other lab tests that are coming. It's from Access Medical Labs in Jupiter, Florida. Great lab. We work with them a long time. And we're going to do two tests. One is a 24-hour heavy metal toxicity test. And you know why that's important. So uh we want to roll that out and if there is something we're going to we're going to get the those those things out of you. And you're going to be feeling a lot better. That's like an energy leak all the time. Now, the other test is adrenal stress test. Now, you're going to spit in the tube four times throughout the day, and it's going to measure a hormone called cortisol, the stress hormone. Now, cortisol gets a bad rap sometimes. It's actually essential. You can have too much of any hormone or too little of any hormone. Cortisol should be high when you wake up when the sun comes up, and that's what wakes you up and makes you alert. As the sun goes down, less light enters the eye, the body starts to notice, "Hey, it's winding down." And so cortisol goes down and then sun goes down, cortisol goes down and you can fall into deep restorative sleep and wake up. That can be interrupted in a number of ways. We want to know if that's being impeded. This is measuring your circadian rhythm, the natural rhythm of your body in conjunction with mother nature. Super important for energy and sleep and hormones. So those are two tests. We want to get those back as soon as you can, uh, the sooner the better. And once we have all your labs back, we'll get on a call and we will talk. We will go through that and say, "Hey, how can I use this to personalize my protocol, my supplement protocol, my everything?" And I want you to understand your body. And those are tests that you want to do every six months, at least once or twice a year, just to make sure because those can change. Now, the genetic test doesn't change; that's your genes. So you don't need to do that test again. So that's the cool thing, and that's going to tell us your optimal diet type. And from there, that's how we customize these things. Because what a lot of people don't know is your training program is pretty much. the same type of program. It's not the same. It's different. It's going to seem very different to you, but the principles behind it is the same. If you want to build muscle or burn fat, it's almost identical, in fact. And I'll teach you all that as we go through that if that's something you're interested in, but what changes is your nutrition. That is what needs to change. If you want to add muscle, your nutrition changes. If you want to burn fat and keep that muscle, your nutrition changes. And so, I just want to give plant these seeds with you because there's You probably have a ton of questions. I'm hopefully hopefully I'm getting this creating some clarity for you. And this first step is we need to create the north star. Now the north star is also called Polaris. And before there was GPS, if you were lost, you found the north star so you could find your way home. And that's what this acts as cuz there's life's going to get crazy sometimes. You know how it is. And when it gets crazy, what do we tend to do? We tend to make other things more important than our own health. So the foundational belief is I must first fill my cup so my tank is full and then give what overflows. That one phrase was taught to me someone I really respect and it changed my life because I would get busy with goals and stuff and I would train but it wasn't my best. Or I'd miss meals uh because I made I was it was all about giving everything away serving 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 but I could only serve so much eventually I'd burn out I'd just fall asleep for like a day and a half <laughs> and wake up I'm like where am I and then uh and so there's a better way and that's what we're going to learn not that you need me for this you're going to figure this out one way or the other but the north star process is the next step there are five questions we just upgraded it because we learned more after we took the last group through it and so now it's even better and it's not something you do once my friend No. It is a living 
thing. It is a document. It is a story that is coming to life. It is a movie script that you are revising and polishing and energizing by looking at each day. So it's going to get better and better. But how do you know when it's ready? Because it moves you. You get emotional when you read it, when you think about it. It starts to become a thing you can just recite because it has become ingrained in your nervous system. It is a story of victory that is coming true without fail. Nothing can stop it because of the momentum and energy and drive and clarity of vision and purpose and identity that you have cultivated. And so how do you use this thing? So once you fill out the five questions, you'll get a copy sent to you, but also just take a screenshot too as you do it, just in case something happens. Never had before, but I would hate for that to happen. And so take the screenshots, but also you'll get a copy sent to you. Print that out. I would write it out by hand as well, because something different happens when you write something by hand. You actually remember it more as well. And so handwrite it as well, and then keep a copy of it. And this is how I do it. And a lot of other clients have done this too now, is I print it out and it's on top of my phone across the room, which is my alarm. So when I wake up in the morning, I turn off the alarm. I just want to say thank you as I walk over there. I train myself to do that. And I just start saying thank you as I wake up. And I just start reading it. And I'm in this state. When you first wake up, you're in a state called theta. It's just above sleep. It's not really conscious. But you have access to the subconscious mind. You're more open to suggestion. It's a trance. And so you start reading it and you start to, that becomes programmed in the front of your mind for the day because it was your first thought basically. Now, what you do is as you train, you revisit. As I warm up, I'm thinking about, I'm setting my intention. So I'm, 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 I'm here to summon the line. I'm not here just to show up because I don't feel like I'm enough. I'm here to access my fullest potential, my highest and best self. I'm not here to get energy, I am energy. I generate energy by what I focus on, by the stories I tell, how I carry myself, how I talk, how I walk, how I move, where I place my attention. Am I focused on what's missing or am I focused on what I'm creating and what I'm giving, what I'm learning? Those are different things, that's an intention. Then you crush the workout. You're present for it. You're not distracted. You're not listening to like podcasts and all these other things. No, you were absolutely present. It's a moving meditation. And then as you cool down, there's mental condition exercises throughout your workouts, through each session. So you want to do those things. When I say smile while you do an exercise, there's a reason for that. We are wiring up the nervous system in a way where you're going to love this shit. That when life gets tough, when you get stressed, that you use training and nutrition as a vehicle to reconnect to your most resourceful self, to generate energy, to find a way to lead, not to cower. That is what training is. And then when you're in a great state like that, go to your North Star, hit the voice memos on your phone and read it out. Put some, maybe put some music in the background and record your voice, just like I'm doing right now. And then save that on your phone. And then what I usually do around three, four o'clock each day, I have a little wall in my energy. And so I'll have like a impromptu training session. I'll do martial arts. I'll play basketball, which Antonio will shoot hoop or something. And then we have this way of, do we just move and do it? But I'll also listen to my North Star. So I may just go for a walk some days and just be like, all right, let me move. Let me reconnect. Let me just let go a second because I got, I accumulated too much stuff in my head. I need to get, create that balance between the heart and the head again. And then before you go to sleep, so what, so far, what do we have? When you wake up, when you train, and I'll listen to the audio as I train again and again and again, just like in the background of my mind. So I'm programming while I'm doing difficult things. And so I start to associate doing difficult things with moving towards my vision. See what's happening there. And then 15 minutes before you fall asleep, what you focus on, where you place your attention will be repeated in your subconscious mind 17 times in an eight hour sleep cycle. It's it's mental programming. This is why I learned from a very effective sports psychologist that worked with a lot of my football players. And they would have a, a highlight reel playing as they fell asleep with like announcers saying incredible things. 
and they'd fall asleep and then they would have a lot of times they would have dreams about this they wake up feeling pretty good though they didn't have doubt they weren't worried about something they were focused on victory not on defeat and so this is a huge part of this program and if you want to not just transform your body but carry this on and constantly improve and be better in 10 years than you are now that's possible but you got to get the mindset right cuz then and only then those eight daily disciplines that i mentioned in my talk and i'll teach you again and again and again they're not going to become disciplines they're going to be sporadic and random and nothing really happens in those cases we must be consistent and relentless we need and for that to happen we need a clarity a vision a purpose a identity and it's got to move you inspire you And yeah, it's work, it's effort. And that's why so few people are successful when it comes to their bodies. Like some people transform and they just relapse instantly. But the ones that continue to improve, the ones that make this a foundation, a launching pad for every other in your life, those are the ones that do these things. That this is so important. That's why I'm taking so much time to record this audio for you. Listen to this again and again, my friend. If you have questions, let me know. And if you do have questions for me, the best way to do that is you are VIP. you are in the app that's the only thing i check in fact and what you do is you open up the app and i'll say chat with coach that is me you only talk to me that's where it's at and so i check that every day except sunday uh sometimes i do it sunday i need to work on that but uh <laughs> i'm still a human all right my friends hey this is going to be something incredible i'm honored to assist you on this and it's in your hands you got the treasure map it's time to create a masterpiece No lambs, only lions. You tap into the real you, but you have to retrain yourself. The way you retrain yourself is you wake your ass up in the morning and you say, "I am here for a reason and a purpose. And it's bigger than my moods. It's bigger than the difficulties of the day. I am here to live like a lion, not the fear of a lamb." Thank <laughs> you.